game plan. Jobs report has just hit. I'm going to delve into it. We're going to look at the data. We're going to look at the charts, and we're going to break it all down. So without any further delay, happy Friday, guys. This is Verified Investing Studios. Let's get started. All right. So first and foremost, we're going to start right here on the website. So this is the Verified Investing website, folks. And basically, this is your go-to, right? And there you have me there. But basically, right over here, we have the Market Blast. That's what I look at every single day here. We're going to go to that, and we're going to take a look at the key details. So as we scroll down, we have to look at the non-farm payrolls report. Now, the non-farm payrolls report came in way hotter than expected. 303,000 jobs created. Expectations were for 200,000. Last month was 270. It was reported last month at 275. It was revised down 5,000. Now, again, 5,000 revisions, not a big deal, right? If it was 100,000, that's a big deal. This is basically in alignment with last month. But this number, folks, the dollar ripped higher. We saw the yields ripping higher. Now, the market was rallying after yesterday's massive sell off. It initially dipped and then kind of stabilized. In fact, we're still net positive. What does this tell us about that big sell-off yesterday, guys? Check this out. It tells us that when we were dumping out, and again, I even talked about this in trading the close yesterday, it meant that people knew. There were some players that knew this job number was going to be hot, and they were dumping like crazy yesterday afternoon, and that's why the markets just dumped out insanely. Okay, so let's talk unemployment rate. Unemployment rate comes in at 3.8% expectations were 3.9 last month was 3.9 percent so again a better number here lower unemployment right less people unemployed so everything here turning up roses and again what does this mean it means that the markets are expecting less rate cuts from the fed it's getting to the point folks i don't know if we're even going to get one rate cut this year unless all of a sudden we see a major downturn in the stock market futures again were positive going into these numbers initially dumped out um, and again, we did see a rebound a little bit back up, and we'll keep an eye on the markets. Uh, participation rate I have in here, it's 62.7% versus 62.6%. That's how many people are participating in the workforce. It did go up a little bit, some speculation that some retirees are starting to work from home, and that's why you're seeing that uptick in the participation rate. The dollar ripped higher, and the number here trading now 104.52. We'll look at that chart. 10-year yield back to 4.4%. And again, surprisingly, we're not seeing a big sell-off in the stock market. Okay? Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to go back to the homepage. I want to show you guys the other key things that I wanted. I look at on a daily basis. So as we scroll down here, again, you can see, by the way, you can see the economic calendar that we have on the website here. This is the earnings calendar. This gets updated every weekend for the next week. So that'll be on there. And this is just a scrolling of all of the economic things that you might want to see. Now, if we look down here, we can click on the non-farm payrolls data. This hasn't been updated with the new number yet, just with the last month. But you can see that generally we've been trending down but now we're seeing a number that basically comes back in at around 300,000 so we're right up in this vicinity right up here so again are we starting to reaccelerate I personally don't think so but nonetheless it is interesting to note okay now next up we have to just take note that the jobs were created the sectors that had the most jobs over 60% of all the jobs were in hospitality, education, and government, basically. So again, you have to wonder, is hospitality, is that, is that really, is that people picking up part-time jobs? That might be, right? To picking up a waiter, waitress job, picking up something like that. And again, does that tell us some underlying factors about the economy? We'll go into those details in just a minute. All right, back to the homepage here, scrolling down. By the way, I have the unemployment rate, the importance of U6. We'll talk about that another time as well. But as we scroll down, the one thing, and by the way, look at the crypto heat map today. That's not a pretty heat map for cryptocurrency. This is yesterday's stock market. It will update today once the stock market opens. Below here, this is really what we want to focus on. We have the fear and greed numbers. Right now, we're now back to a neutral rating on the fear and greed for the stock market. And we're still a little bit on the overbought side in the greed zone, greed zone for the crypto market fear and greed index. Now, the big thing here is the Fed tool, right? So let's click on this right here. This is the Fed watch tool. What are the numbers telling us? We've seen that this June number right here, and I'm sorry, it's a little blurry on the screen here. I don't know what's going on there. I'm sure it'll refocus at some point. But basically what we're seeing is it's now down to only a 50-50 chance 
of fear in, or of essentially the Fed cutting in June. So we're getting to that point right there, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. All right, let's go on to a few other things, guys. We're going to go to the actual charts. I want to bring up the charts and take a look at what's going on. This is the U.S. dollar. Now, before we get into the U.S. dollar, I just want to make a quick announcement. We're going to spin the wheel in just a minute, and we're going to do our latest round of winner, right? The winner for the latest round of things. Okay, so the one thing I want to just mention is if, you're, if you are a current member of Verified Investing or In The Money Stocks, just remember, if you haven't been able to access the site, there's an email we sent about a week ago that gave you all that information. If you still have trouble, just reach out to our support staff. We have lots of people, awesome people working on the support side to make sure that you get access to all the data that is for premium members if you have a premium account. And again, we showed I showed you homepage. That's all free, folks. You can come check it out anytime you want here at Verified Investing. A lot of those charts will be updated on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis to make sure you guys have the information you need to make good decisions. Okay, so looking at the dollar, look at that rip on the dollar. Now, before we get into the drawing for today, let's quickly go to the daily chart. Now, this is amazing, right? So if we look at this daily chart of the US dollar, we knew we had this big pattern, right? This big wedge pattern. Notice how we kept hitting, hitting, and we broke out and we confirmed. Now, I've taught this so many times, but I'm going to teach it again because I know we have new, new viewers. And I also know that if you're like me, something has to be taught to me about 10 times before it actually sinks in, right? So what do we do here, right? So if we go to this and we look, we had the confirmation breakout here. And then what do we do? We retrace to the scene of the crime yesterday. Then look at how it bounces. And this is why the confirmation signal is so important. I talk about this all the time. When something confirms, I don't chase the breakout, right? The dollar confirms, I'm not buying the dollar up here. Instead, I'm waiting for the retrace to the scene of the crime. That's your opportunity. Now, sometimes it doesn't hit, but more often than not, it does. And it gives you a good solid entry price where you can actually make some good money. So dollar is pushing higher today, which would have been expected per the chart, per the breakout and the retrace. That's exactly what is playing out here. Now, one other chart I want to show you guys, we have to look here. We're going to look at the pre-market data. First and foremost, this sell-off yesterday was intense. All right, it was a, it's so intense. I actually got in a spider's trade. I actually ended up taking a decent sized loss on it because it just didn't bounce. And this was a day trade, right? But that's just the nature of the beast. But ultimately the sell off here on the heavy volume was institutional money. There's no doubt in my mind this was institutional money that somehow found out that the jobs report was gonna be stronger, so much stronger than anticipated, right? We were expecting 200,000. We came in 30, basically 50% higher. 50% better number on jobs. So again, they basically pre-ran the market. And now you're seeing just sideways. And you can see, again, here's the job data. Initially, it dropped, then it bounced. Now we're kind of just settling in here and kind of heading back down a little bit. But nonetheless, we're still net positive from yesterday's close. But again, there's no doubt about it. This was some front running going on. Someone got the information ahead of time because it was way too coordinated, way too intense, where there was literally no bounces. It was just massive sell side volume there. Okay, going to the daily chart, should anyone here be, if you've watched this, if you've watched the game plan with me for, I don't know, a month, should there anyone here be surprised that the markets are starting to turn down? And the answer is no, because we know we confirmed below the wedge pattern, which changed it, and I said this many times, from a buy the dip market to a sell the rip market. All right, now again, most retail investors will be buying the dip for a long time, even as we come lower and lower until they get too scared because they're not getting the bounces that they want. But again, it's important to learn from the charts, let the charts tell us. Where are we going on the S&P? Well, ultimately, there's a few levels to watch, but you have to start looking at levels like here, where you get little flat tops and you get little bottoms right there. See that kind of area right there where you went up, you pulled back, you went up, pulled back, and then you got above it and then pulled back here before going higher. That gives us a general level. And again, it's right around 500 on the S&P or the spiders, I should say. This is the spider chart, which is the tracking ETF for the S&P. Having said that, Ultimately, I do still think that we are going far, far lower, all right? There's just no way in my mind with inflation moving up, and this is exactly what I predicted literally six months ago. I said inflation's not going to get much below 3%, and then it's going to start to move up again. Now, it's not going back to 8% or 9% in the near term, but it's going to creep up, 
and it's going to handcuff the Fed. And you guys know that I've been talking about that. Longer term, where are your major supports? Where would I think that we're going to go to in maybe the next six months? I got to believe at some point we see a correction back to the previous all-time high from 2021, 2022, and that would be a drop down to 480. Secondary pivot right here at about 460. And then the longer term, this one's going to be a big one. The low from 2022 connected to the low of 2023, that level there will also be. So those are your three downside targets on the S&P 500. Now, what would make me think the markets are going to go higher here? Well, if we look at the chart, very simple. If you reconfirm back inside or above this area, well, then the bias has to flip back to bullish. But right now, the bias is definitely on the bearish side. All right, before I forget, guys, I want to do a quick one here. We're just going to quickly do our drawing. Yesterday, someone won the uh, one-minute scalpel uh, educational course, $300 value, trading the one-minute chart. Incredible stuff. It's actually going on sale, I hope, this weekend. So take a look on Verified Investing this weekend for that course. It is incredible. Literally, I've even learned so much from it. So again, I hope you guys take a time to learn it as well. All right. Who's going to win this one? And then don't forget, we're doing a drawing for who's going to win something on Monday. And I have a special surprise for you guys. All right. The winner here, guys, is... All right. Somber Band. At Somber Band. Right there, guys. Again, at Somber Band. Reach out to Lawton at VerifiedInvesting.com. Lawton at VerifiedInvesting.com. Okay. So... As we go into the more and more on these markets, I do want to show the 10-year yield, guys. The 10-year yield surging to the upside as well. Now, interestingly enough, yesterday, we saw the 10-year yield pull back. Now, why was the 10-year yield pulling back initially? And the answer is pretty simple here is when you have a stock market that starts to collapse, and yesterday was the first time I saw a drop like this in probably since 2021, 2022, late 2021, 2022, People run for safety. When they run for safety because the stock market is collapsing, they buy bonds. Now, when you buy bonds, it means demand for bonds goes up, which means interest rates come down. Now, we're seeing a reversal of that today because the reason why we saw the selling was probably because this jobs number was so strong, and it means the Fed is not going to cut as much. And by the way, I feel like a broken record because like a year ago, I was like, guys, the Fed's not going to cut so much. And then it, back then it was like, oh, six cuts by early 2024. Now we haven't even you know, had any cuts and we're almost mid-year. And it's now, it was three. Now it's probably two or one. I'm leaning more towards one. The thing is, too, you have the election, right? So they're not going to want to cut. Unless the markets are collapsing in crash mode, they're not going to cut around the election. So you don't have much more time. You have December later this year after the election or maybe one of the next couple meetings before it gets too close to that election. Either way, are we going to break out from this level? We closed above, didn't confirm, closed below, closed above. Watch for confirmation maybe on Monday, assuming we hold these gains. All right. Uh, quickly here, let's go to the NVIDIA chart. NVIDIA had a technical breakdown yesterday. It is unconfirmed, though. But nonetheless, if we look at this, right, what do we know? Well, first of all, remember when I called the, the high was in on NVIDIA based on this reversal engulfing candle? That, again, even though we bounced higher, I kept on saying to people, everyone was like, oh, no, it's going to go higher. It's going to go higher. I'm like, listen, just let the chart tell us. We don't need to speculate. All that does is stress us out. If you close above the high of the reversal engulfing candle, okay, well, then it, yeah, then it goes higher. As long as you don't, it, 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 the factors are to the downside. The favoring is to the downside, right? Well, what do we do? We come up here. We never closed above that level. And now look at this. We've now broken a major trend line here on the daily chart on NVIDIA. Now, listen, as I said, it's unconfirmed. So we have to see if it confirms. If it confirms, this is your next target zone right here. A major level here, right around, probably right around, it looks like around 750, 750, 755, right in that vicinity. Now, that's just one stop on a longer path, in my opinion, towards downside. But nonetheless, you should get some sort of technical bounce at that level. Um, quickly looking at a couple other charts. I mean, look at the selling. That's This was yesterday's intraday chart on AMD. Absolutely annihilated. If we go to the daily chart here, guys, look at the break. I mean, this chart... Essentially, this could be a crypto chart because a lot of the crypto charts look like this. But basically, what we saw is this trend line, right? Right? 
Okay, so there it is. Look at how it's bear flagging underneath. Remember your bear flag. Look at that, down move sideways. What is that telling you? Notice how it's staying below that trend line. So it's not recapturing the, the support level and it's bearish consolidation, and then you get the down move like this. Now, you will have a little bit of support coming in right in this area. There'll be a couple levels. I see a good one right here and a good one right here. But either way, this to me is a big breakdown. And think about this, guys. AMD was up to $225 just basically a month ago. And here it is at 165 and change. Is it going to go lower? Probably is. Doesn't mean it's not going to bounce. But again, I do think it's got to correct even more. I would start to get interested on a swing basis maybe in this range, which looks like it's right around 140 to 150 on the chart. Okay. So again, guys, interesting stuff there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We did see a big pop in the VIX yesterday. Again, that selling in the market made it for a big pop. We still are into key levels. I want to show you this, this trend line on the VIX here because I do think it's important to kind of take note of. So if we take a trend line on the VIX and we drag this out, this is your break point right in here. Okay, so right now, look at that line on the VIX. And the, and the reason, by the way, for those of you that don't know, the VIX is the fear indicator. It's, it's the volatility index. Um, the reason you pay attention to it, and I always say this, is that when the VIX is super low, like 13 or 12 or 10, you can basically expect complacency in the market, but it's also an opportunity to start accumulating shorts as well as long VIX and be careful about, you know, basically when people are complacent, it means no one expects anything bad to happen. And that's usually when something bad happens because no one expects it. When everyone expects something bad, it usually means everyone's prepared and therefore you don't get the same selling. Right now we have massive complacency in the market. Everyone just assumes we're going to go up, up, up. And also to keep in mind, we've heard banks. I mean, how many big, big institutions have upgraded the S&P in the last month? You know, again, I'm looking at that and I'm like, dude, it's exit liquidity. Like, like, well, to be honest, they, they might actually believe it. But based on the charts, I'm like, nope, not at least not now. Doesn't mean we can't later on go up, but at least for now, a, a bias is definitely to the downside. All right, guys, we're going to do a wheel spin real quick here. Let's find out what we are going to win for next, uh, next Monday. And I'm going to do a wheel spin here. Hold on, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Let's go. Oh, look at that, the winning trader series, amazing. <laughs> I promised you guys we'd do the winning trader series, all right? That's 5,000, I think it's actually on the website for 10, but, but we'll call 5,000 either way, amazing there. One of you guys will get the winning trader series for free. It's literally 20, just about 20 hours of everything in my head, everything I've ever learned, um, and it's, it's on video format. I put it on video format, it's kind of my legacy where at some point I do want to retire and I want you guys to continue to learn. So again, Monday, someone will win the winning trader series. And again, I know you guys have been asking for that. It just hasn't hit on the board. I wouldn't mind if it hit multiple times, but someone will win that. Don't forget, you have to be following Verified Investing on YouTube and you have to be, or you have to be following it on Twitter. And also just remember that at the end of this, at the end of the stream, I'll ask you guys a question to answer underneath. That's how we can do the lottery from questions, the, the, the answers that we get from underneath. All right, let's go over here real quick, guys. Let's take a look here. This is the natural gas chart up here. Now, again, NAT gas is pulling back. Overall, I'm okay with that. Notice again, this trend line here, we're still above it. I want to see these two trend lines hold. And then I think you could be making bullish consolidation for an up move on natural gas. We will get into Bitcoin in a second. I do want to quickly go over oil real quick here. Um, in fact, I'm going to go to my other oil chart as I have more annotation stuff on there. So if we flip over here, guys, oil absolutely 100% confirmed above this level. So what does that mean? Well, just like we looked at on the chart of the dollar just a little while ago, it means that this now, this $83 to $84 level now becomes technical support. All right. It also means that there's a chance we could be going a lot higher on oil. Now, just this week alone, I think oil's up 6 or 7%. This is the first week of April. So this inflation move of 6 7% on oil is not going to be reflected till next month's CPI. But next week, we have last month's CPI, which was still up on oil. I didn't even calculate out. I think oil was up another 6% last month as well. So this is the key, guys, is that inflation is so tied to oil 
because oil's in everything, right? It's our gas tanks through gas uh, of cars, it's transportation, it's in plastics, it's in everything. And so the higher this goes, the more negative it is for the Federal Reserve because they cannot act. If you have inflation at 4%, let's just say, which is arguably where we're probably headed over the next month or two, and you see the Fed cutting rates, what do you, where do you think inflation goes at that point if they start printing money recklessly? And again, we're not even talking about the U.S. government and how much debt that they're basically printing by just borrowing money. But you're talking about inflation going north of 10%. And by the way, if you look at the 1970s, and by this, there's a chart on the homepage that goes into this where you can see the 1970s waves of inflation. But that could be where we're headed uh, in the charts of inflation. Either way, where could we go on the oil chart? There was some analysis I was doing here. I want to just show you guys this. There's a parallel line here, right? So we can look at this parallel and I'm a big fan of parallels, you guys know. You probably see them every stream from me. But there's a parallel line that actually gives me a max upside target around this 105 level, 100, 105 level. Now, I hope we don't see oil that high, frankly, because if oil's that high, we're in a big pickle. I would almost guarantee that if oil's that high, the stock market's down 10 to 20% at that point. We've actually seen this inverse correlation. One thing I want to show you guys real quick is if we flip over to the 10-minute chart, I'm going to get rid of these trend lines is that the exact moment yesterday that oil began to pop, that's when the market started to sell off. So right here, this move on oil, right? Right here, you can see it just shows just before that 6 p.m. time frame. This is, again, different time frame than here in the East Coast. But that's exactly when the, t the stock market, which had opened up like this, right? It's exactly when the stock market started to collapse. And as oil ripped higher, the stock market collapsed faster. And so there's this inverse correlation of those two. Now, we got to look into Bitcoin real quick, guys. And I want to cover Bitcoin and gold and even maybe touch on silver real quick here. Um, Bitcoin is reversing some of the upside from yesterday. The positive for Bitcoin, it recaptured this trend line. Remember, it was unconfirmed. So that the factors tell you that the probability is it still can get above that line very easily. And it did that. That's exactly what the confirmation level alerts you to. It hasn't confirmed. Now, we are moving back below. If we close below today, watch for confirmation next week. Now, you, I, say, I say next week, crypto trades 24-7 even on the weekend. So I guess there's a possibility it confirms on the weekend. I don't like confirmation that occurs on weekends for crypto because there's no volume behind it. I want to see confirmation with volume. That tells me big money is actually doing it versus just a couple small traders trading some leverage over the weekend. All right. Next up again, guys, we can touch base on gold real quick. Gold initially was selling off today. Now it's moving back higher. Notice the dollar is ripping and gold is actually going up. This is because people are scared. People are buying the safety of gold. This is an incredible chart on gold. Don't forget, my target range is still up here. If I flip over to my weekly chart, actually, I think we have to go to the monthly here real quick. If we go to the monthly chart and zoom out, you guys know where that target is by looking at this trend line. All right, so trend line 2320, 2330 on that front. If we flip over to silver, silver's pulling back just a little bit. That's to be expected. Remember, it confirmed. So what do we know? Well, where would it where would be like like for me, I'm I I I I'm play a disciplined trader, right? So the idea is that I won't be a buyer up here. It's too extended, but if it comes back to this line right here, that's a confirmed breakout. That should be your area of support. So I'll be interested. I don't know if I'll buy it, but I will be interested at that level on silver. And then lastly here, guys, let me see if there's anything else. We touched on Nat Gas already. Um, I did want to look at Ethereum real quick because Ethereum's in a little bit of a pickle here. It is right at this trend line. So big trend line, hit here, big bounce, hit here, chopped sideways. It looks like it's going below. Remember, it has to confirm. So as long, if it closes below, no big deal, right? Well, it's not, a, it's not that it's not a big deal. It's just you start watching it, but it's not an official breakdown. But just watch this trend line on Ethereum. If this trend line breaks, Ethereum honestly could be headed back to 2,700 if we confirm. All right, guys. Um, wow. Friday, it's been one heck of a week. The new website launched. Amazing. I love the feedback we're getting, and we're just going to keep improving on it. Make sure you go check it out. Look at all that. Even, by the way, you can even sign up for a free account. There's additional information that, that is unveiled when you sign up for a free account on Verified Investing. And you can always look at market, the advanced analysis. It's only 20 bucks a month, guys, and it's all of the pros post in there, their analysis, whether it's fundamental on crypto, technical on crypto or commodities or anything. It's 
it's all of us together. It's the one product. It's kind of the lowest uh, dollar point, so it appeals to the most people. I understand money is an issue, especially in the economy these days. But again, 20 bucks a month, that advanced analysis is a no-brainer to get some key analysis that you're not going to find anyplace else. All right. On that note, you guys go have a wonderful rest of your day, weekend, everything. I love you all. Thank you so much for your support here at Verified Investing. I'll talk to you soon.